Hey guys, so it's Carla Cole. Um, I'm back again, so we're going to hope to get the, um, hopefully you guys can hear me this time. Um, so I'm going to kind of let people jump on. Um, so welcome to the show. This is Carla Nicole. Um, I'm with Coach Shelsey, and we are talking tonight about the truth behind trauma bonds and why trauma bonds seem to cause um, so much anguish in life. Um, please let me know when you jump on that you can hear me okay. So let me know. Thumbs up or I can hear you. That's most important. Um, and also, just to let you guys know, if you don't already know about this, but we have a group called Teachable Moments. So please make sure to sign up for our group. Make sure you answer the questions about our group because we will be having activities and things like that coming up. Um, we'll be doing yoga, meditation. We'll be doing a lot of great stuff coming up in our group called Teachable Moments. So make sure that you tag your friends and make sure that you um, let everybody know. Invite people to our group. Once you join our group, please invite people. That's what we're wanting to build on. We want like-minded people that really want to um, seek for wellness in life and seek for peace in life and come up with plans to make their their life much more fulfilling okay wonderful so now hopefully the sound is better so we should be back in business now <laughs> so this is this is part two uh we were talking about trauma bonds and coach shelsey was sharing with us um the strategy about you know why every time a lesson keeps returning to our spirit and our hearts and our minds and, and what's going on she was trying to tap in at the time before we had a uh, diff technical difficulty. Why we keep having these things um, come up again and again and again. So I'm going to let you go ahead and finish your analogy. <laughs> Chelsea, hopefully we're back. In yes. Place. No, I think we're good. Can you guys hear me? I can hear Carla really well. Yes. Um, I can and I and no more echo. I was hearing my voice and I would be talking and hearing my voice behind. I wasn't even right. able to focus. But I know where we were. I was talking about we keep we unintentionally so we have this conditioned programming that we look for what we know um because that's that feels safer even if the outcome isn't what we would say what we want like no i want a relationship that looks like x y and z yeah but if it's a b and c then i know what the outcome in is and that feels safer to look for more of what we already know so we yes. keep finding these people that even if we say oh i want this person to be different or i want these relationships to be different we keep finding these people that are more of the same because even if they're not what we would choose to be best even if they're not in alignment with what we want they're in alignment with what feels known and what and what's known is like safe in our minds right. Right, exactly. And yes. yeah, it's like this little trick, our ego, our ego, a lot of times we villainize the ego so much. Um, and we talk about like our thoughts, like we have to be against our thoughts. And But the ego is so sweet. It's so innocent. It just really wants to keep us safe. And mm -hmm. it thinks we're safe when we're within what we know. And so it's like, oh no, uh, it, it's almost like the risk of being denied or the risk of losing or the risk of missing out on that really great relationship that we say we truly want yes. is scarier yes. or worse than knowing that I'm here in this relationship that I already know that even even though I keep getting the same outcome even though right. I know this person is going to act this way even though my reaction I know is going to be this way I'd rather stay in this situation not consciously subconsciously right. right back there inside that also, of all of that not to cut you off, but that's also why a lot of people miss the red flags am i correct in thinking yeah. we we skip over the red flags like if we see something or we notice something that's a pattern and we notice it's not really um beneficial long term we tend to downplay it or said. overlook it or try to you know we always say well i just wanted to give the benefit of the doubt no you knew it was going to be a mess, but you you just disregarded your original gut feeling or you you denied the red flag and said, well, I don't really see the red flag. I'm going to act like it's not there. 
but we actually saw the red flag and we just denied it and just went on with it. Well, even like unconsciously, yeah, unconsciously it was like we saw the red flag and then we're like, oh, but it deep back there, the subconscious is like, oh, I see the red <laughs> flag and I know what happens now. And knowing what happens feels better than being with someone where I don't know what happens and I don't know what the outcome will be. And I don't know if I'll be rejected. Like knowing that I'll be rejected, like being with a person that I know I'll be rejected by in the, the, in the ego eyes and the subconscious feels safer yes. than choosing someone that may or may not uplift us, be on our path, like be our partner or reject us. Right. So it, exactly. yeah. Yes. And so, um, and I guess I will talk about the analogy briefly about what I talked about in the blog. Well, it was, it was a post, but it was all, it's actually a whole written blog on my WordPress where I talked about your brain is the house of your thoughts. So your brain, and what, what, what I did was I took the different rooms of a home and then in that home, we have different rooms, right? So I said, well, you have a living room, you have a bedroom, you have a bathroom, you have a basement, you have a dining room and a kitchen. All of these rooms, you have thoughts residing in those rooms all the time, every day. So when we're actually in the physical, we do spend the majority of our time in different rooms in our home. Yeah. So what I want people to think about is because I placed a different strategic reasoning behind each room and what they signify in life. So for instance, I chose the restroom rest to be the room in your brain where you relieve yourself of things. Okay. Your bedroom is where you create. You're sexual, you are sleeping. Those are creating, that, that signifies creation. And it also signifies resting, which means allowing the body to rest. Just different rooms. So with that said, I said in our basements, we, st we tend to store drugs. Okay. We yeah, that's a great point. And, we, and, we, we, and which signifies it's the stuff that we d don't want to deal with. Yeah. It is the stuff. Okay. Stuff. So for the most part, I said, when you, when you have a thought, staying rooted in the basement of your mind, be it as it may, it's in the junk room, which is the basement, because you don't want to face the depression. You don't want to face the sadness. You don't want to face the disappointments, the failures, the rejections. None of those things do you want to visit. Then you just don't visit it at all. You tend to avoid it. <laughs> yeah. Go down there to wash clothes and get the hell up out of there. Or we live there. Primarily spend most of our day there. Indulge it. And that's where people become manic depressive. Uh -huh. They become constantly negative. They become yeah. continuously <laughs> Um, isolated because they're withdrawing from all the other rooms in the mind. I love that. So much time in the basement, <laughs> in the darkness. So, with that said, you're spending primarily most of your time in the darkest part of your mind. When you, what we tend to do is what we think about. We talk about. Yeah. Yeah. So if I'm thinking about my depression, my sadness, my negativity, my lack, I don't have this and that and third, what happens is we talk about that. So when we become interactive with different people, it could be strangers or it could be people, familial people, or it could be relationship, and we begin to bond. So we connect, right? Mm. We, we're magnetic people and we draw yeah. together. We connect on that level of what we're putting out, where you're, we're attracting in. Right. Yeah. So say, for instance, I'm my brain, my thoughts tend to stay in the basement. And I meet yes. you, Shelby, and you talk about all the beautiful 
positive things <laughs> that's going on in your life. And then I'm talking to you about all the negative. You're going to get drowned out. You're going to be like, oh, I can't. Like, this is, this is too much. Like, you're a nice person, but I'm going to find myself pulling and drawing, withdrawing from you. Because now the attraction to you is starting to fade because we're not connecting on the same level. You're more in the dining room, which the dining room signifies edifying the mind. That's where we eat. That's where we eat, eat, eat. Where you're, you're a reader. You're focusing on educating the mind. So you're always trying to get in the head and learn some things. Spending time in the basement, you're in the dining room, we're disconnected. We don't, we don't relate. But if I meet you and I'm always in the basement of my mind, and you are the same, and we connect, we're starting to vibe with each other. The first thing I'm gonna talk about is my drama. My trauma, mm -hmm. my sadness, my misery, my lack, and then you're like, oh yes, my sadness, my misery, right. my lack. So now energetically we're bonding and connecting yeah. together, right? And we're, and we're now attracting this is the law of attraction. Tell me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Okay. So now we're attracting to each other based exactly upon the, the same. drama. Yeah. The drama. The and even like what you're, what you're showing here, like um, two people that are each other's half. So that person that's yes. really um, needy is going to attract the person that, need, that always needs to be doing for or overcompensating for yes. somebody else. So you find right. that person that is like in an unhealthy way yes. that will keep allowing you to repeat the same behavior over yes. and over again. So I'm, I'm really needy. So I'm going to look for someone that's unavailable. Somebody that's unavailable is going right. to find someone that's needy so they can be unavailable to them or right. somebody that is going, someone that's used to like overdoing and over helping somebody else or mothering, like in a, a women's way, like mothering. Yes, um, another for another man. She's gonna find somebody that is gonna take advantage of and like over, you know, and the, and there's and it's All negative friends, for both yes. sides. Yes. Yeah, and so I feel like now we can be. This is something else that I want to bring about the trauma bonding is you can still trauma bond with someone that spends a majority of their time just creating. So they're in their bedroom a lot. In the master bedroom of their mind, they spend a lot of time creating and stuff like that. And you can trauma bond with them also. The difference about that, though, is nine times out of ten, it doesn't last very long. Right. Because the relationship means we're relating. So I can see what you're saying by understanding. Yeah. So if I don't so understand I you, we start to not have a close. Yeah. Yeah, you I, because a lot of times we're close with people that I I understand them. I get I get yeah. where they're coming from. I, I I can identify with what they're talking about, with what they're dealing with, with how yeah. they feel, and things of that nature. But when I don't understand, it's harder for me to bond with someone I don't understand. And I'm not even talking about language because there's people with different languages that can create yeah. a bond and have a complete understanding of each other and maybe through pictures or something they learn to work around the difference of language or difference of you know that not they, them not having the same culture so they have a difference of how they were brought up but people can still bond but the difference of that is you are having an understanding and that's right. kind of how i created how to relate because I try to bring the picture to understand what is it that we're not getting within a trauma bond scenario. And the problem is a lot of times we're frustrated because they don't understand each other. And if the differences cannot be relatable, the relationship cannot be uh, what I would say essentially a good one or a, 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 a one that can last or desirable. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, I can see that. I, I, I love the analogy. And I see like exactly and I love the analogy that you said of the basement, because we could even say like the basement is like the subconscious or the unconscious of the things yes. that we don't want. Um, yes. And it's not that we can't let and it's what you said, like, we do want to go there because we need yes. to deal with those things. Yes. Not go there and sit in there and feel crappy and let it overwhelm us and let it make us not do anything. It's yes. go over there, pick up something 
Like, yes. okay, there's this box here of whatever kind of whatever stuff that I've been trying to ignore. Let's take it upstairs, maybe yes. to the bedroom or to the dining yes. room or to someplace else or to the bathroom and relieve yes. ourselves of it. Like figure yes. out the different ways. And it's not, that's where, that's where I was saying, like, it's not as simple. Lots of times people like to say, well, if you loved yourself, you wouldn't allow X, Y, and Z from somebody else. Right. Like you can only accept the love from someone else that you have for yourself. Like consciously on a conscious level, it's like, of course I love myself. Of course I don't accept this or I won't tolerate this. But then we do, we continuously do over and over and over again, because subconsciously it's what we're used to. It's what we do accept. It's what we think we deserve sub in the unconscious, like behind. Mm -hmm. So we bring that up to the subconscious where right. we can see it. Okay. This stuff is in the basement where I can't see it. Let me bring it up to where I can see it. Yeah. And now how, how do I deal with it? And it's not just mental. It's not just like I saw it. It's like energetically, I need to deal with it. Emotionally, I need to deal with it. Yes. Um, somatically, yes. like within my body, I need to be able to deal with it. And then I need, and the feeling, yeah, like the emotion, yes. the feeling of it. I need to then after that, after I've seen it mentally, emotionally, all of the things, then I can put in new behaviors and new habits. And then I need to practice those behaviors and habits for a long enough time that it's not something that I'm changing. It's something right. that I'm becoming. It becomes part of who I really am. And yes. it takes a little bit of time. So it's not enough to just know or right. just see. Yeah. And yes. like what you were saying, that's like all so that. True. Yeah. And I also say that in our house or in our brain where the thoughts travel, I believe that it's very important we spend um, a certain amount of time a day in those different areas and we should be balancing them out. In yeah. other words, we can't always be so excited to just edify our mind and not apply nothing. Right. Not even prepare for anything. Right. Just, just doing all this reading and doing nothing with what we're And reading. not practicing and, and not, not putting practicing. it into our real life. Correct. And then it's not good to live a life of never defecating or relieving yourself. Yeah. All that toxicity in your soul and your body and your heart and soul is not good. You have to release it. See, and I think that, um, and I also said this in the blog, that when you don't really visit the restroom in your brain, okay. in, your heart, in, in your soul, a lot of times what happens is we become opinionated and we don't self-reflect. Right. We spend more time being more opinionated and we spend more time oh. in judgment of other people because we're not defecating and looking at self. Yeah. We're not spending enough time self-relating, self-discovery, self-inventory. We're not doing that because we're spending a lot of time like, huh, well, I'm, I'm good. I don't... Right. And finding more evidence to, pr I love, I love your, I love this analogy. It's so perfect. And it's exactly what we do. Like yeah. a belief, right? Like, and I think I've talked about this before, like our belief is yeah. just a thought that we've had yeah. that we've repeated to ourselves over and over again until we, we believe that it's true. Like that becomes true for us. And then once it's true, what our mind likes to do is keep looking for more and more evidence yes. to substantiate that truth. And if we're not willing to look at it and be like, okay, why do, like, it's obviously, it's not a bad thing. Like, we're, right. we're again, coming away from that bad and going back into allowance. It's like, why right. do I believe this? And does this belief actually serve me? Or is it something that I was patterned into, conditioned into, taught right. to believe? Because so much of it comes from way back there. Then it's like, is right. it actually true? Or does it even serve me? Can I choose to switch it into a belief that really does serve me? And so, how do I yes. keep finding evidence that the new belief is true instead? And, and I also said in the beginning of our, in our first uh, video, I mentioned that it is important to know that you're not a victim of your thoughts. So I want to reiterate that as well. We do have a power within our soul to apply our thoughts accordingly. A lot of times we feel like, oh, I thought of that thought and now I have to deal with that thought. And now that thought has taken over my day and I feel right. this and you're going on and on and on. But the meditation piece, why that's so important to help you balance out the fact that yes, thoughts come and they do. 
but it does give you the power to now basically GPS your I've been yeah. really in judgment this week. I spent a lot of time judging other people. And we do. Um, I spent a yeah. lot of time. And it's for everybody else. else. And we're spending a lot of time on that. So, so let me GPS myself into the bedroom where I'm having creation, where I'm spending time focusing on that. Where, let me spend some time in the dining room where I'm edifying, where I'm reading, where I'm taking some time to learn something. Let me go in the kitchen and prepare, start to base my preparation of life and things I need to do to try to apply rather than spending so much time in judgment. Because when we are spending a lot of time in that space, we find ourselves less focused on other things and areas that we need to definitely focus on. I also yeah. talk about the living room. And what I say about the living room is, is that's where we spend most of our time watching TV or that's where we spend enough time that we're watching social media. Which right, a little turned off. Us, which signifies us focusing on other people's actions, mm -hmm. other people's lives, other people's, how can, how can I be more imitative? How can I get what they got? Look at what they have. I don't have right. that. Or it's Those, like an unintentional consumption like yes. in the living room, like where you're supposed to do consumption is the dining room where you sit down, focus <laughs> on your, your nourishment in yes. the living room on the TV, the computer, the telephone, the social media, whatever it's unintentional consumption. Yes. And, and you'll find people that watch the most TV that can give you the latest gossip, the latest tea what's going on and ever, everywhere else, nothing to do with the, their current life. It is their okay own life. To say this, it is okay to have that time. That's what I'm saying. Absolutely. It's okay to be in these different rooms in your brain. That's fine. Yeah. But it has to be a balance. You cannot yeah. be overly consumed with watching someone else's life and not focusing on your own because you're going to yeah. find yourself miserable and feeling unfulfilled because they have everything and I have nothing. Right. They get to do this and I don't get to do anything. And the next thing you know, your joy of watching becomes now the, the, the measure to which you're trying to get your life to your life. And now that's uh -huh. the blueprint versus you having your yeah. own vision of what you want in your creation and spending more time in your master bedroom creating for yourself what you want you're spending more time watching other people's lives and now you're in comparison to that yeah. which you can never be that because that's not your life right so that's another oh, that's part of the analogy that i was going to say we just it's okay to spend time in different rooms of your brain that is fine that's the house of our thoughts but we need to make sure that we're balancing them when it comes right. down to trauma and trauma comes no matter what it's a part of life but yeah. how we deal with it and how we allow ourselves to really take away from what we have and what we understand and then apply certain things to where we don't have to become a victim. And right. that's where victimization comes from, is trauma bonding. We're yeah. a victim of everything. Everything's a trauma. Like, they did this to me. I'm a miserable because they did. No. Right. Not <laughs> and know? I love that you, you said that, too. This is, the, this is what always, usually, like, in a trauma bond, in, a, in these kinds of uh, p people could label them as like toxic or that it's unwanted. It's not the in alignment, right? It's not the relationship that's in alignment with what we really want or what we truly deeply deserve. What we're all like divinely born to have is right. to look outside. This is what always happens for us to look outside at somebody else and say, yeah. oh, it's them. And then and then it goes back to that looking for evidence that will continue to prove us right. Yes. So it's like, oh, this person is, I, I keep hearing um, like gas, things like gaslighting or a narcissist. Mm -hmm. And these are like really strong words. Like if you're not yeah. a psychologist and these are terms that are put on people so that they know what kind of treatment that they right. need. And these words right. kind of get thrown around in relationship. Like, oh, this person is a narcissist. Because like, because, well, okay, so if the person, we think the other person is a narcissist, why am I attracted to that? Right. What it's not that it's not there, you know, like, we're empowered to change what's in us. And we're not empowered to change anything outside of us, anybody else. 
So if we keep putting it on somebody else, that's how we become the victim. We're like, yes, so-and-so won't change for me. So-and-so won't treat me better. Yes. So-and-so <laughs> won't do better for me. Okay, so how am I doing the same? How am I not changing for me? How am I not doing better for me? How am I right. not looking for more for me instead of expecting that other people are supposed to do this for me? That's disempowering. That's victimization to see victimization. that, okay, how is it that, so everything that we see in other people is yeah. either a projection or a reflection. So we see these beautiful things in other people. We're like, oh, I wish I could be like so-and-so. Oh yeah, that already exists inside of me i already am that beautiful you already that wonderful are that, that right. caring that considerate exactly. as i and see that's in other one people one of the beautiful things about imitation is that we can look and see in others some pure things yeah. examples of what we can really actually accentuate in ourselves again yes but it depends on our perception of what we see are we looking yes. at them to judge them or are we looking at them to allow them to lead us by example one yes. of the great things of not being prejudiced, and I say this a lot because I'm one of those people that love to be a student of whomever. I don't care if you're a Buddhist. I don't care if you're a polygamist. I don't care if you're uh, a monk. Any I, religion, I knowledge. stage or knowledge you come from. I don't care about that because for me, I feel like your presence and what you're gifting allows me to now challenge what I'm thinking or how I feel about certain yeah. things and can give me a different perspective, right? Yeah. And I think that that helps When you're willing and open. Yes, when you're willing to clip the so-called okay. eyes and saying, I'm not going to let my visual, my physical visual to teach me about <laughs> who's okay and who's not okay, who to learn from and who not to learn from. Because that's what a lot of things happen. This is how we become more opinionated. And this is how we begin become more prejudicial with different people, um, you know, or, or, or cultures or whatever we're into. Um, yeah. We have a tendency to not be open. Yeah. Because we close off. Because, again, like I said, in the restroom of your mind, you, have, really you have the ability to yeah. now defecate and release yourself and relieve yourself yeah. from the toxic thinking and toxicity yeah. can be in just being suspicious yes you know, I mean, you know yeah you yeah exactly what you said my child is teenage. all teenagers yeah. are, are a reason to be suspicious of where are you where are you, where are you, where are you going why why haven't you answered your phone what's going on so we can become suspicious, which is a toxic behavior. Whether we right. want to admit it or not, we can become jealous, which is a toxic behavior. Everybody, nobody's exempt, including myself. None of us are exempt from toxic behaviors. So we yeah. have to use the bathroom to release ourselves okay. from those well, behaviors. And the more I see it in somebody else, because you're talking about, so you're like even at a little bit more evolved level saying, oh, I'm suspicious or I'm jealous and this is toxic. But for me to see somebody else and say they are acting jealous or they are acting suspicious for no reason or they are whatever, the more I see it in someone else, like that actually, if I say, oh, that person is toxic or that person gossips too much or whatever, like I'm guilty of the same. Like I have right. the, I have the same things in me. And it's, and it's kind of rough if you're not in the place to be in allowing and and be really compassionate with yourself and say, oh, this is just, you know, my sweet ego that doesn't know any better, that's been conditioned into this way to believe right. these things and to think that it's protecting me, to think yeah. it's protecting me to say that person is a narcissist, that person is gaslighting me, that person is lying to me, that person is, right. you know, whatever, like it's the ego thinking and, and it goes even deeper, like we can say the mind doesn't know the difference between what is happening in actual physical present reality or what we believe, what we think right. or perceive. So right. if we're remembering something or if we're projecting something into the future, what our tendency is, is to keep remembering bad things that happened to us yes. because we're like, oh, this will keep me safe in the future or right. to project it into the future and say, well, what if this person does this? I have to be suspicious of them in case they do this because the mind thinks if I suffer it right now, 
Like even I though it's not actually happening. It, later. Yes. it won't yeah, it won't be as bad if it actually happens. Like I'll just think about right. it now. The, it's like tricky. It thinks that it it, it's like trying to be really sweet, you know, it's like let's deal with this right now so that later if it really does happen, it won't be such a bad blow. But it's right. it's not, not we're just true. putting ourselves through it twice if it is going to yeah, happen. Exactly. Or once for no reason if it's not going to. Right. So again, and see, this is the power of the mind. See, this is what I love about this topic is there the power of our mind. And we talked about this the last live where the mind is not where it is, but we can be so in deep in thought. We can bring up a memory to where it feels like it just happened. Yeah. It is so amazing of how our mind works. But a lot of times we don't talk about that because we don't want to admit that we can have feelings or emotions or just a, a prick of a memory that based comes on up. stuff that's not happening right in this moment like and physically right now the same yeah it feels Absolutely. exactly the same yes and so that's why I think it's imperative that we understand the power we have in ourselves that we can gps our thoughts we can yeah. start to sit back and say hey i do have some power did i go to the bathroom today because my, I'm yeah. feeling real suspicious about my man, and there's no reason for it. He hasn't right. done anything to make me think, feel suspicious. So why am I suspicious? Let me go to use the bathroom. Let, maybe I need to get and the rest. This, like, of my yeah, the way that you're saying, Carla, this takes like years. Like, and I, and I'm sure like a lot of people that are watching this, they can yeah. be at that point as well to be able yeah. to go, oh, why am I thinking this? This isn't me. This doesn't serve me. But like for me to get there, I, and probably for you, it's like years of reprogramming that yes. unconscious, of reprogramming grabbing, like listen, patterns and conditioned yes. habits and conditioned ways of being. But I have to go to unconscious the ways of to do being. it though. We have to go to the basement to clean. Have it to tight. go to the basement. Yes. yes. And again, and remember we talked yes. earlier that it is okay to go to the basement. You need yeah. to go down there. One of the things about my actual home that I live in, I'm talking about my physical house now, not, right. not the house of my brain, but the physical house that I live in. I had the numbers done on my house before I moved in here. A very good friend of mine, she says, hey, I'll do the numbers on your house. Give me the address. Give me your lot number and let me run the numbers, right? She runs the numbers on my house. And this is what she told me. She says, well, your home is a wonderful home <laughs> to... to to have a family. Um, it's got great energy in this house. She said when people come over, they're going to feel at home. And everything she said about the house before I moved in is exactly the energy that's in the house now. But however, she said, your house will clutter. So you need to make sure a, that you keep it constantly clean. So you have to make sure that you have upkeep of pulling out things and go, out. basically yeah. going in the basement so your home doesn't clutter so instead of throwing it away so you don't have to deal with it you're just hiding it that, so you don't yeah. have to deal with it right so what i have to do now because i have that knowledge because of course in numer numerology people don't want to talk about but there's a power to it yeah. learning about numbers and stuff like that she helped me to understand my home the energy of the home before i even moved in so i already was able to prepare when I moved in the house, okay, so I gotta make sure I'm on top of this clutter. And let me tell you, every single six months, I do a sweep. So I'll do keep, um, what is it, the keep pile, the donate and trash, pile, and the giveaway pile. So I have three uh -huh. piles, and I go through this every six months to make sure that my house doesn't clutter. So the reason why I use the house analogy when I created this house analogy in the house of our home or, or, or the home of our thoughts is because I know how important it is for me to go in the basement and clean it out. If I don't show yeah. my home, I will be buried in here. And you'll be yeah. like, my God, every time I call, you know, you're on live with me, your house is getting, you're getting smaller and smaller because stuff is getting more and more piled up and yeah. just smothered and stuff. But I use that as an analogy because I don't think a lot of us realize that when you don't pay attention in your mind and say, did I, and I try to give a pictorial of what goes on in the mind because people don't really want to under, some people don't want to read, some people don't like to read, but I try to give them, did you go to the bathroom today? Did you, mm -hmm. did you go to the bedroom? Did you, 
make love? Did you sleep and rest? Did you create something? Did you eat? Did you prepare? These are not saying you have to go to each room every day in your mind, but you do need to have a balance. Yeah. It's vital. For the health of our mind and thoughts. I see um, it kind of what came to my mind as you're doing this analogy. It's really perfect. It reminded me of like the the Marie Kondo, right? With the yes. have you heard of her? Like the organization, what is she like? The tidy upper or something like that? <laughs> yes. But yes, she yes. this this is something else that is, and this is why coaching is so amazing, because yes. like you and I have been through. I've had multiple coaches and I and mentors, and I know you've had coaches and mentors. Yes. And it's yes. one thing for you to go down into the basement by yourself. <laughs> and into that depth and, and be overwhelmed and not know where to start and not know what to look at and not know what's most important and not, and then think like, what should I be great? What thoughts do I want to get rid of? What ones are whatever. And it's yeah. different to have somebody that's been through it and that can guide you through it and that can yeah. help you see things in a different way and to yeah. change, shift the energy around it. Because if you get down there and you're like, Oh my gosh, all of this junk and it's so overwhelming. <laughs> And either I'm just going to close the door or I'm just going to get rid of it all and I'm going to resent right. it all. Yes. And the Marie Kondo, the reason that I thought of it is because what she explains when she's telling people what is to see each thing individually. And then as you see this thing, if you decide that it's not for you, you always think it. And this is something that I, always, that I keep in my coaching that I was taught is like whatever thought, emotion, um, whatever it is that we're resisting to always think it because it did have a service like it either is teaching us a lesson or it had a purpose in the past or it was bringing us to where we're supposed to be right now yes. and so to always like thank it and have this kind of energy around it so whatever those that resistance is like whatever we think is in the way is actually right. the way all right. of that stuff that we think is garbage and crap and the thoughts that we don't want and the stuff that we're resisting and the hook that we don't want to feel like yes. going through that is taking yes. us to the next level level yes and so being able to because always there think is the power it, in that yes yeah yeah being able to like see it and think it and when we're on our own it's it's hard in the beginning if we haven't had any kind of training if we hadn't had any type of um, mentorship or experience, yes. it's hard for you to look at something that was really painful and traumatic from the past and yes. be able to like any, you could even do it just on the mental level and be like, okay, thank you that I went through this. Now, how do I get rid of it? You know, right. that, that's like the first instinct is like, now what, I, I'm, what am I supposed yes. to do with it? And I think the best, the, the best teachable moment I think is heartbreaks. Yeah. Heartbreak being in love and getting your whole entire heart broke yeah <laughs> those are the best teachable moments and I, the reason i use love or um intimacy as being one of the hardest things to get over is because there's a lot of physical sexual energy there's a lot of um there's a lot of investment in each other in the time together um there could even be children created out of that. Yeah. And so there's so much, you know, and in that intimacy, I feel like when it breaks or it, it rips apart, it really does rip the person apart because they like, oh, I had a comfort. I had a, a normalcy. I had a routine. We had a team together. We were bonded because we had soul, you know, uh, yeah. a unison of the souls. So something else is the illusion of the future. Like your whole yeah. life as you saw it was going to unfold, that doesn't exist anymore. Right. That, that so in and, and, and that trauma though, that's so hard is most times you'll find yourself bonded with friendships, within friendships because you both have a heartbreak. Yeah. So that trauma so that you felt from the heartbreak, you break inside and you connect with another heartbroken person and you both yeah. can relate. Yeah. Oh, yeah, well, my husband did this. Oh, well, my husband did that. Or my wife. And I had it so hard and I had it hard too. And then you guys are holding and hugging and, and all of this going on. The trauma bonding is so challenging because 
it feels good. It's oh, almost a safety. And a lot of times it, it builds an attachment to the person yeah. and the attachment to the pain, but then actually being able to discuss it and have that. I, uh, sometimes it's like a, a, almost like a quiet bond with each other and you have like the secrecy and you guys can discuss all the dirt and everything that went on and, and, but it causes us to live there. We're now living yeah. in the trauma of what we went through in the heartbreak. And then we have someone connected to the trauma that we're now spending most in the majority of our right. time. So now the trauma bond is now so strong. And so that then becomes when you break up for that because you want to detach from it. Now you got two heartbreaks. Right. And now you're like, and, it, and that's, and that's because neither one is healed. Right. Cause if you were able to like, have this really healthy great relationship then that would actually heal the trauma or if you were able to heal the trauma and figure out what it was that is yeah. keeping you stuck and not allowing you to move forward and to evolve and to experience life as it's supposed to be experienced then right. you wouldn't be attracted then you would naturally so this is what i find like with a lot of my clients that have done relationship mastery is that by the end of six months they naturally detach from people that they had been looking and so this is these are some i'll give some like clues as to what you would see as a trauma bond so a lot of times people will say i'm going to keep saying women because that's who i work with but women right. will look to their friends or their fam family members and they'll look for excuses to break up with or to get away from that relationship they'll like need feedback to tell them what they already know so they're like, oh, he's horrible. He's terrible. He does this and ex this, this and that to me. And he treats me in this way. And they're looking for this validation for them to get away. But then right. they're, they're not being able to change the behavior because right. the behavior comes last. So yes. it's first the mental, have to take care of the emotional, the spiritual, the, emo the, the emotional, the feeling, the energetic, all of those other things have to be healed and taken care of. And then once those things are taken care of, like sometimes the behavioral part takes care of itself. And this is something that like a lot of society and a lot of um, other teachers will focus so much on the behavioral. So like even when we talk about, I love to talk about um, like health and nutrition because it's something that is relatable to so many people. Right, if we is. just say, yeah, like if we just say, oh, I know to lose weight or to be healthy or to make muscle, I just have to eat this and, and work out in this way. Like we right. know that on a mental level and then right. we like schedule it in our planner and then we do it a couple of days. And, th and this is cool because it's the beginning of the year that we get to talk about this, but right. we'll schedule okay. it in and do it a couple of days. And then for some reason we fall off and we're like, gosh, I know this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Or I know I'm supposed to break up with this person. Or I know that I'm supposed to invest X amount of time in my business. But then the follow through, the actual behavior doesn't happen because there's deeper stuff inside that needs to be dealt with right. and if we don't know how to go into that basement into that unconscious and pull it up and look at it and and then once we look at it it's like now what do we do with it and see where we need to go with it is it an emotional thing is it a is it a spiritual thing is it an energetic is it all of those things and right. how many times right. do we have to allow it and give it permission to move through until right. the behavior becomes yeah. natural Yes. So that's why yes. I love to talk about like a state of being yes. like we, we become instead of changing or yes. making or forcing Didn't Michelle Obama become, have the best title, becoming. Yes. <laughs> yeah. We get to become who we really are. It's like yes. these other things are not part of us. They've been patterned into us or conditioned into us, yes. but like we get to become who we really are once we can yes. see those things and know how to deal with them. And Yes, and balancing. That's why I say visit the rooms. Yeah. Visit the rooms of your mind. If you're not in the dining room enough, if you're not edifying your mind and not reading yeah. enough and you're not really spending enough time educating and learning from other things, um, it, it, it's, it's really going to bring about a disadvantage. And then you're going to find yourself out of balance when it comes down to love and life and relationships. And that's what most people are drawn to. Most people are drawn to wanting a love relationship. Most people are drawn to being parents. Most people are drawn to being, you know, and having a great family and all of these things. But the issue is 
you first have to see where is your brain, where are your thoughts traveling in the room to your mind? Because if they're just traveling and you're not controlling and being mindful and ahead of the game, right? you know when you're feeling down, you know what you tend to do, you know what kind of triggers in your heart and soul that goes on, you know them. You know what triggers you into the sadness. You keep going to that same store that he bought you the, the beautiful flowers at, and you know it's going to take you right back into that dread, right back into that sadness, right back into the heartbeat, into the heartbreak. Yeah. And you keep going there because you're attached to not necessarily the place, but the place is the trigger. Yeah. So we also have to be mindful of what triggers is costing us draw our draw to that particular trauma. And then once we understand the trigger, okay, I need to quit going over here. I keep going to the, to the grave site to see my dad on this day because he passed away as an example. You know, I keep going to the grave site. It's bringing me to this dread. I know it's going to take me here. I keep going. Right. But you know that. Why do you keep doing that? We right. And we, do, we don't know the why that's behind it and that's the real right. thing like there's for some somewhere in there there's this really sweet intentioned why and once we give it what it really wants then we don't have to do it anymore right exactly like that's the lesson yeah right that's the teachable moment it's right it's right there in our head in our hearts and souls and mind and we can start to see oh my god i've been doing this and, and sometimes it's knowingly sometimes yeah. it's subconsciously Sometimes it's unconsciously. We're doing stuff and we just don't know why is it every single da 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 I get the same feeling. Well, yeah. let's look at it. Let's go to the basement of that. We're in this basement right here. We know if I don't go down there, I'm going to keep having this stuff cut come up. It's going to yeah. keep piling up. <laughs> it's like we have to be mindful. But again, this is why it's important and vital that in our life, we take the time to pay attention, to understand certain things. We have to make sure that we're starting to take step by step by step courses in our life to understand certain things are causing us to feel dreadful. Certain things are ca causing us to feel joy. But what are we doing to balance them out? It is not a good thing to have a life full of all joy and no misery. You have to understand it comes with it. You will have times that you're sad. You will have times of depression. It's real. But it doesn't mean you have to live there. Again, we talk about thoughts. The last time, a couple times, we talked about how thoughts will come and go. But we want to hold yeah. on to them with a death grip. Let, right. the, let the thought come and let it pass. You don't have to have an action or a reaction. Just allow. That's one yeah. of the beautiful things that you gave me as a gift. Like, here, you know, um, you might feel something. But it's okay. Yeah. Well, well it wants know. it to be acknowledged and then let it move through. Let and because everything through. is energetic, yes. right? If we go like yes. to that level, like our thoughts are energetic, our emotions are energetic. And when we try and hold it in, it's like festering in that same place instead of flowing. If something is flowing, if we're releasing, we're also receiving yes. at the same time. Whatever we're releasing, we're receiving. Yes. And so if we're holding on to it, like, what am I supposed to do with this thing? Let it go. And it's right. so, it's so much easier said than done when we don't have a practice for it. When yes. we don't, the meditation practice right. is like really, really, like, I love it so much because it's something that you get to later put in to different practices in your life, to what somebody yep. said to you or how somebody treated you or what you wanted to happen or what your desire was like. You right. get to put it into practice in, in yeah. practical daily life situations, not just in that meditative 20 minutes a day or 40 minutes a day. Facts. And this is why, and, and, and I did say something recently, and I think we'll bring it to a close. But I did say something recently that I think shocked a couple people because I had, I had a moment that I was angry uh, about something. And I was angry and I was like, you know what? I'm not going to yeah. go, I'm not going to go to bed angry but what I am going to do is I'm going to um allow my my emotion of anger to go ahead and pass but mm -hmm. allow it to pass without meditating now meditation I did not use as a crutch because I think sometimes we can yeah. we can take meditation and just use it oh I just be quiet and I'll just close my eyes and then it'll all go away no 
allow your feelings and your frustration or your anger to be. One of the things I think we tend to do is we can also meditate using it as a crutch. We need to know that, am I, is this a good time for me to meditate? Yeah. I'm meditating in a good time. And just like I told everybody on the live, like I was not in a good space to meditate. I knew that. So I'm not going to do it. <laughs> but what I would, like, yeah, I think it's important that we give ourselves permission to be honest. Because if I'm going to sit here and meditate, I'm going to be angry. So my meditation isn't coming from a pure space. It's mm -hmm. coming from a space of anger. So now I'm just holding on to the anger. And now I'm just a, a think tank portraying being in, in meditation. No, you're, you're still right. on, being angry and simmering on the anger. So let's not just use it as a crutch. So I just wanted to use that as an example. Sometimes it comes a point where you have to have time that is more... I would say a better time to when you are doing certain things, a better time to be in balance. It's a better time to go to the basement because we may not be, it may not be a good day to be going to the basement and you're all over the place on other yes. things. And that's and, the and other so thing about being, about throwing away yeah. everything. And maybe there's some things that's vital that you keep, but you have thrown yeah. everything yeah. out because you're angry or you're not in a good yeah. place to really start to, to really take and categorize things properly. This is what's key for relationships of yourself. A lot of times everybody wants a love relationship. I get it, but you have to first have a damn good relationship with you. And in that the dope relationship with yourself, you have to sit back and allow yourself to go through understanding when is it a good time for me? When is it a good time for me to go to the bathroom? of my thoughts when is it a good time to go into the kitchen and allow myself to prepare sometimes yeah. we don't prepare and, and pro it, it properly and now we're trying to make a meal and we don't have everything we need yeah. and you're trying to make something you can't make it without that particular ingredient so you're, you're just try oh my god now you're really frustrated <laughs> we have to have a point in time and, and be in the rooms of our mind like i said earlier in the rooms of our mind, we need to take those thoughts to that room when it's the best time. So again, yeah. this, comes, this comes from educating yourself of you. Yeah. And sometimes yes. we have to do that in, in, our, in our preservation, in our time of being alone. Sometimes we need to say, well, is this a good time for me to be doing mm -hmm. all this? Maybe I need to do it tomorrow. <laughs> right. And you saying this, like, this is, this is the other thing about being coached or being mentored. When we're conditioned and patterned into doing things a certain way, like you could, you or any person that is angry. Could, right. So this is what happens when we have an emotion and it just gets worse, right? We get stuck in this loop of like, I feel angry. I think of all the thoughts that will support my anger. I get more angry that bring up more thoughts that make me supportive of feeling more angry. So then I feel more angry and then we're just <laughs> stuck. In this, in this place. And so it's like, we are honestly, truly, and I know this 100%, we are like, I am my greatest teacher. You are your greatest teacher. Everybody is their own, your own intuition yes. is, is your best guide for you and what you need to do and how you need to behave. And so like you were saying, oh, maybe this isn't the best time for me to address this thing because I'm feeling angry. Um, but for someone to get to that point, if they didn't have any kind of training or any type of learning or any type of guidance or mentorship into how to deal with that, it's like, we'll just keep doing, the person keeps doing the same things over and over again. They don't even know how to trust their own intuition into, okay, what's the next step then? And they'll just be like caught in this loop of like, now I'm angry. Now I have all the thoughts that make me, so the thoughts that make me angry make me feel more angry. So then what comes of that? I'm going to do something that puts this energy out there, right? So I'm going right. to react in an angry way. And right. that's probably not in alignment with what I really want or who I really am or what I really need. Right. And so having someone, and I'll give like a quick tip that's, you know, really practical. And if you can, some people will take it and they'll put it into their lives and they'll just do it all the time by themselves. Some people, right. if you need more support, please reach out to us. Um, I would be happy to go through this with you. It's a short process. Anything that we feel like an emotion, it will process through and be experienced within 90 seconds. But you have to focus only on that feeling 
for those 90 seconds. You can't go, why am I feeling this? What is the purpose of this? Oh yeah, but this happened. And you can't go back to the thought part. So you have to go like, where is the anger in my body? What does it exactly feel like? Does it have a shape, a size, a texture? Does it have a movement? Does it feel like, and stay with that mm -hmm. for 90 seconds. Once that 90 seconds is over, like what, that feeling, it dissipates. It just goes away, right? Because wow. it's just energy. So oh. it just wants to move through. So you've given it full permission. It's like, okay, you're totally allowed to be here. Yes. This anger. And I'm going to completely yes. presence you for, yes. and you don't say 90 seconds. It's not like I'm waiting 90 yes. seconds for this right. thing to go away. Right. Cause that's right. still, that's connecting to the mental part, but right. I'm going to, I'm going to give it full permission to be here. I'll give this anger full permission to be here for as yes. long as it needs to be here. Yes. And you're totally allowed. Like, I trust that you have a reason to be here. I trust that, you know, it's, you're not unwanted because you're trying to show me something that I wasn't able to see. Like our emotions are just, um, they're just feedback, right? They're just right. feedback for us. So, okay, I'm going to sit with it. I'm going to completely allow it. And then when it's over, okay, now I'm ready to go to the basement. Now, without that energetic anger attachment, now I can yeah. see what was it that made me angry? What yes. is the purpose behind it? What is the deeper desire behind the anger? And now what are the aligned steps that I can take? Like, what did it really want for me to do? What's the real outcome instead of reacting yes. in an angry way? What are the positive proactive yes. actions that I get to take? I love that. I love that because it's so hard to, when you're upset, it's so hard to just be like, oh, uh, I just want to, you don't, most of us don't have a punching bag at home. So yeah, he just can't stop. No, it's worse him. if we do. Most of us actually do. It's our kids, our spouse, our you yeah. know, our neighbor, our best friend, our mom, our dad, or whoever. Most of us actually do, and it, and that's like the right. toxic, you know, trauma relationship. It's like, oh, you know, I'm used to being pissed and treating you in this way. You're used to being treated this way, and we'll just keep this back and forth. And I believe it's your fault, and you believe it's mine. And actually, I just have to deal with my own stuff, and that's the yeah. only way that it blows, that it moves through and changes. Love it. Love it. I'm so glad we had this conversation, man. It was so fulfilling. Yeah. I think we nailed this one. I think that we gave everything we could um, to try to get people to understand. Make sure you guys, um, like I said, tag your friends. Um, be sure to join our group. It's called Teachable Moments. Um, like I said, Teachable Moments group. We will be doing yoga. We will be having classes and courses. We're going to plan for a retreat. We're going to have a whole bunch of stuff lined up for our group called Teachable Moments. So make sure to um, ask to join our group and make sure you answer the yeah. questions on the group because we're really wanting to build our group so that people understand that Teachable Moments is going to be very interactive. It's going to be a group where we are really trying to devote time to wellness and making sure we are focusing on better loving better care for ourselves better love of self um and really focusing on if we do want relationships what type what type of relationship not just is it healthy but is it going to be a a a, a relationship where you both can grow you know it's yeah. not just about um relationships are not about right or wrong but they're more about understanding each other and making sure that we have a, a comprehension of how each other is feeling and are we relatable and like we talked about earlier we relate to what we seem to house in our heart and soul so as long as we're housed in depression in sadness we're going to connect to people that are doing the same so we need to first work on self you want a loving relationship long term you want a long-term relationship and all of that i get it but you have to first start with you. You can't skip that part. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's, just, it's not going to happen. Please right. make sure to share this video. Many people need to hear this. If you guys have a topic you want us to touch on, please let us know. Chelsea and I both, we are very excited about how well our show is doing. We're getting lots of love and appreciation for what we're doing. And it, we're just both very humble because her and I decided to do this on, I don't know, it was like a, a, a Sunday one time and we just were like, yeah. you know, we have so much to give and we love people. We love helping. 
We also enjoy coaching, but we also understand that there is a need going on of just people just not in their, in their supreme self. And so please make sure to ask us like what topic you want us to touch on. Be sure to um, give us any kind of feedback. If, if there's something you guys want us to share, just let us know. Um, and uh, Shelsey, I'm gonna let you close out. If there's anything you would like to add to what I said, please do. No, I, I loved all of that. I love our conversations. It, um, I, we get to see, like, pick up different insights and things that I think people understand in a better way. Like you're talking about the house, that's a different way that people can relate to and understand and comprehend things. Um, yeah. You were talking about what you know, a good relationship is, I've, in my experience, what I've learned and what I share is that we have these ideas of what a relationship should be or what other people should be for us, but that our relationships uh, is our greatest mirror. So yep. the, the, every relationship is just to show us our path, what our next lesson is, what we need to learn, what we get to progress and what we get to change. And that's what li like that's what life is about, right? It's we're constantly in change. The we we know a hundred percent. That's all. What's that's the only absolute is that everything is always changing. Best. We get to choose if we're changing in alignment with who we really are, or if we're staying stuck in what we're not. And so, being able to have these other people always be like a lesson for us. They're always a lesson for us. It's never. A negative thing if we can see that like oh this person brought into my life this opportunity for yeah. me to have this lesson and for me to grow in this way so I think I would just close by saying like to stay away from saying things like calling people toxic or saying um, you know using those kinds of words that are clinical words that are it's not really our place to use because we're yeah. just keep finding more evidence to not do things within ourselves, but to really oh. say, okay, why am I with this person? Why am I attracted to this person? What does this person bring to my life? So even though I've labeled it as negative, it's not negative. It's out of alignment with what I want. How do I find yes. why I'm attracting what I don't want? Like yes. what I don't want is showing me what I do want. So now how do I move into behaviors and actions and live the way that I do? And just with, ev that's with everything, right? Everything is an opportunity, a lesson, a learning. Everything happens exactly as how it's supposed to happen. And I'm like, just like you said, Carla, truly honored that anybody that's listening to this, I truly believe like if you're here, it's for you and we wanna be for you even more. So if you have questions, if you wanna hear more about any certain topic that we kind of, we just like free flow and talk about different things. But if you're like, oh, I wanted to know more about projections or, or whatever, like let us know about that. We really love being in service to you guys and it's in service to us too, right? It's what I said, what, when we're open, when we're releasing, when we're giving, we're receiving at the same time. So I Absolutely. hope you guys have a beautiful Sunday. I'm going to pop into the comments and I think Carla will too. And um, I know there was lots of great comments and we'll chat with you guys yes. in there we for a minute. All the comments, make sure you tag your friends, share the video. Um, and if you did happen to miss our first video, we do still have some pretty good information yeah. on that one too. So make sure to go back and look at that too. That um, quick also 15 have a minutes. Channel, by the way, guys, YouTube channel called Teachable Moments. So go over there and subscribe. I almost forgot about that. How do I forget about that? Teachable Moments on YouTube. So our videos, we have some videos on there. This one will be uploaded to it as well. So make sure that you go over there, subscribe, like, share our, our content. We're really working hard on this and we're, you're going to see a lot more. Um, but right now we're doing it once a month, um, but we will be having some more things coming up. Trust me, we're, all, we're getting ready to roll our sleeves up this next week, and you guys are going to be so surprised. <laughs> it's good. So much good coming. Beautiful, wonderful year. Yes. Thank you, Shelsey. I love you. Appreciate Thank you, love. You. Love you. To the table. And you guys take care, guys. Have a good night. It's Carla Nicole and Shelsey signing Shelby. off. Have a good day. Bye.